How we doing traders and welcome to the SPAX attack. Let's get it started, baby. Hey, how we doing traders? Welcome to the SPAX attack. I got my man, the brains to the show, Chris Ketchy. And boy, do we got a special show for you guys. You know, one of the things that we really wanted to do is, is do some special shows for the end of the year. And I know Chris and I mentioned a lot of the times uh, this kind of $10 level that we're always looking at in SPACs. I mean, at the end of the day, that's when uh, you're going to see a lot of them kind of trade and this is this is a real special show you know this is the show that can get you to start getting that research that you need to go ahead and make those informed trades so definitely guys hit the like below let's get this started i'm super excited about today we, we got giveaways we got spacs that are uh, opportunities and we got some extras that we'll give you at the end i know chris got some ones that look forward to in 2021 and guess what guys tomorrow even better show we're going to be looking forward towards 2021 and looking for some of the biggest specs that we'll definitely be looking for in that year so chris how you doing today i'm doing great uh yeah excited seeing a lot of green out there in spack land uh, reversal from yesterday so always a good sign all right guys so i i do see a lot of people joining us on twitter and on periscope and youtube so definitely if you guys want to get into the the getaway definitely join our youtube you know one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to put the giveaway link in the youtube so that you guys can go ahead and start trying to get some of this swag i mean at the end of the day we've been working hard on this stuff so Chris, let, let's get into some headlines first before we start talking some of our swag here. And, and, and what do you see out there? All right, guys. Yeah, so we did have one new deal announced this morning, uh, symbol FTIV. So this is FinTech Acquisition Corp 4. They announced their merger with Perella Weinberg. Uh, this is an advisor company. Deal done at a $975 million equity value. This was a rumored deal about a month ago from Bloomberg. Um, no surprise here. Uh, shares are up 10% on that uh, definitive agreement. Next up, we have DNMR. So this is Danimer Scientific. Recently completed that deal um, with the SPAC. They did ring the opening bell today, uh, getting some coverage on CNBC. Shares were up 25% pre-market and are continuing to be up uh, double digits today. Uh, this is a sustainability, a plastics play, uh, deals in place with Nestle, Pepsi. Uh, one we talked about yesterday, I do like the story going forward. And now that it is getting that attention, that New York Post article over the weekend and now CNBC, um, keep an eye out for this one uh, moving forward. Next up, we have eToro. So eToro is being linked as a SPAC target. Uh, no names officially out there from any sources. Do have a couple rumors for you that we'll get to later on in the show as they are um, connected to some of those under $11 names. Um, but yeah, eToro, another big SPAC target um, being thrown out there. Next up, we have BHSE. So we talked yesterday about this uh, with a lot of SPACs in the red. This was the winner with a 7% increase yesterday. Company is being linked to Reebok um, with Baron Davis trying to acquire the brand from Adidas. Uh, so Davis is on the board of the SPAC. Uh, he did make an appearance on CNBC yesterday. Um, you know, so this one's getting some attention now, those Reebok rumors, you know, with Baron Davis officially talking about them. And with this SPAC having him on the board, um, you know, a deal could be in play here. Uh, obviously, financing would be the big, uh, you know, question mark here. Uh, but I think that maybe some new blood um, into Reebok could do well. And I think that the SPAC will go higher if that deal is officially announced. And then we have OAC. So this SPAC is merging with HIMS. Uh, they announced their merger date is set for January 19th. Shares hit an all-time high yesterday. We're up 3%. Um, so that's a, uh, you know, a telemedicine play, um, you know, kind of that emerging healthcare uh, name starting to get some attention. And, you know, as we head into that vote in January, I think this is going to be one 
um, you know, that gets circulated across some of these um, SPAC groups, these trading groups on Twitter. Um, so OAC is a name that I think should definitely be on your January radar um, going forward. And then I want to talk about, so NGA, NGA is merging with Lion Electric. That's a company that I own, the SPAC NGA. Uh, this is my play on electric buses. So New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced a series of initiatives to increase the number of electric buses in New York. Um, so that includes a $16.4 million um, deal that they're going to expand electric bus usage um, across some of their biggest companies there in the state. Um, you know, he's been an advocate for clean energy. I love seeing the deal here for electric buses. We also have Biden talking about, you know, increasing electric buses. Uh, Lion Electric's one of my favorite plays in the electric vehicle market, specifically targeting vans and buses. I think they're going to be the leader um, in buses, and that's a SPAC that I am sticking with. And then a couple deals yesterday, we did see DMYT merger approved. Uh, it's going to trade as RSI, that's Rush Street Interactive. Shares were down 6% yesterday. Um, also, LCA merger was approved. Uh, we'll trade as GNOG. Shares were down 3% yesterday. And then RMG is now going to be RMO, that's Romeo Power. Uh, shares were down 15% yesterday. So three completed deals, all trading down on those completed mergers. Um, but definitely watch the sports betting story with LCA and DMYT. And then also that battery play um, with RMO going forward. Uh, so that's what I've got for headlines today, Mitch. All right, all right. Uh, just trying to catch up with some of the people in the chat. I know they wanted to talk about uh, what was that first ticker? Uh, that was on me. I missed that one. So that was FTIV, guys. FTIV, FinTech Acquisition Corps. Um, and I think that's the fourth one. Yep. Yep, there you go, guys. Uh, you know, the, the man with the brains here, Chris Ketchy, you guys. Definitely, if you guys want to follow Chris, look in the description below, and you'll find his Twitter, and go ahead and hit him up, guys. All right, so now I want to I want to talk a, a little bit, before we get into our middle segment, let's talk about a little bit about our giveaway. You know, one of the things that we want to do is do a, a giveaway here, and, and you know, we need to bring in some, some cool gear. You know, one of the things that I, I've been seeing is that there's that we need some SPAC gear, man. So l let's go ahead and, and check some of the SPAC gear up that we got here, guys. So if you go to uh, T-Strings, uh, the store here, you know, we got some cool gear, man. We got the SPAC. Uh, I'm a SPAC man here. You know, we, we got the, the, the famous Raz Alert. You know, you, you always need some, some Raz in your life, man. So definitely, uh, I'm super excited about this. So let's let's talk more about how you can get into the giveaway. So I'm gonna put up the link now, and and then you guys can go ahead and start entering here. Uh, I'll put up the link in the chat here. And so one of the things that we're gonna do is is real simple, guys. Uh, you guys just uh, have different ways of entering. Uh, there's five ways of entering. You can get multiple entries for certain ones. So definitely check it out, guys. Go ahead and log on in and, and try to get some of the swag. So one of the things that we're going to do is you, you're going to be able to go ahead and pick from the store what you want. You know, we'll, I'll go ahead and I'll email out uh, to the winners and, and then you guys can let me know what you guys want and, and I'll get it to you. And one of the things that we also want to do is we're not only going to give away the swag. Uh, I have a, a couple of monthly to uh, Benzinga Pro to give away and I think this is even bigger value than our, our swag. I mean, at the end of the day, Benzinga Pro is the way that you can get the real-time alerts, go ahead and get the information that you need for these SPACs to make informed trades. So definitely, guys, hit that link, hit the like, hit the subscribe. This is what we're here for, guys, like always. So the things that you'll need to be doing is, is be a subscriber to our YouTube. Uh, that's just one way to enter, and, and there's many different ways. So check it out, guys. Check out that link, and let, let's get to it. So... What we really wanted to do on this show is get to those ten to eleven dollar specs because at the end of the day, these are the opportunity specs. You know, these are the chances that you're gonna get. You know, Chris, I, I know that you've seen a lot of these stocks go from this ten eleven dollar level up to like. 16 20 and and some even higher than that so let's go ahead and let's get into some of these and, and let's some let's unlock some of these uh kind of 10 to 11 dollar stocks all right chris so i'll let you go ahead and lead first 
Chris is going to go ahead and bring his top five here, and then I'll go ahead and bring my top five. All right. So at the end of the day, guys, you know, always do your own research. Um, the reason we're mentioning these is just because we see these as interesting stocks, um, whether it be the board, whether it be what they're getting into, or maybe rumors. But like always, do your own research, have your plan, and planned attacks is what we're all about here at Specs Attack. So let's go ahead, Chris, get in it. What you got for us? Yeah, perfect, Mitch. So, yeah, we've seen a lot of these SPACs, you know, start to trade at premiums, um, you know, as they get rumored to possible targets, um, you know, which then they can go higher once those deals are announced. But as we saw yesterday, you know, on a big red drop day, um, it's nice to have, you know, uh, a little bit of a, you know, lower downside risk. So what we wanted to do, one of our last shows for the year was focus on some SPACs that are trading between $10 and $11. So that $10 floor, again, um, you know, is important. That's usually where the common shares start trading. And then also, you know, if the deal doesn't go through or if you don't um, want to take part in the deal, um, you know, you can trade those shares back in for $10 plus interest. So important to have that floor. Um, so what I did, I went through, looked at names trading between 10 and 11. These are the five that I really want to highlight today. Um, but I did see going through through the list, there's like quite a few attractive names between 10 and 11. So I have five, Mitch has five. And then if we have time, I also have some honorable mentions that we will get into. So up first, I want to talk about RBAC. So this is Red Ball Acquisition. Um, no surprise if you've tuned into the show before. This has been a favorite of mine. So this SPAC uh, from Billy Bean, the guy from Moneyball. Uh, this has been linked to Fenway Sports Group. That's really the only uh, rumored target. So Fenway Sports Group is the owner of the Boston Red Sox in Major League Baseball and Liverpool Football Club of the English Premier League. They also have a uh, NASCAR team. So Fenway bought the Red Sox in 2002. Um, the team's won four World Series titles since that time. Uh, Liverpool, we saw win the English Premier League, uh, you know, last year, and they also won the Champions League the year before that. Um, and then Fenway Sports Group owns 80% of the New England Sports Network, which is a regional sports channel that airs those Red Sox games. So that's important because we saw Madison Square Group, um, which owns the Rangers, the Knicks, they actually spun off um, their media asset into Madison Square um, Media. So, you know, media rights are so important now, um, and that could be a catalyst down the road, you know, for that company. Uh, Forbes ranks Boston Red Sox as the third most valuable baseball team, $3.3 billion valuation. Liverpool ranked eighth as the most valuable soccer club in the world with a $2.2 billion valuation. Um, you know, so MLB teams have uh, risen in value four times over the last 10 years. Uh, you know, and then we also see new media rights for baseball with Fox and the EPL is also working on some, which will increase the value of those teams going forward. Um, there aren't a lot of publicly traded sports teams. So I like this one because I think built in loyal fan bases for the Red Sox and for Liverpool, along with not a lot of publicly traded sports teams. This could be an attractive one for investors. Um, so if that deal is announced, I think this one goes higher. It's one of my favorites going into 2021. Then up next, we have FCAC. So this is Falcon Capital. It's targeting media and consumer tech. So we talked recently about Spinning Eagle, which is the new SPAC from the team that did DraftKings, Skills, and some other deals. Uh, I wrote an article about that, and it got a lot of page views. We got a lot of attention with that Spinning Eagle video that we did. So there's a lot of people interested in investing in the team behind the DraftKings and Skills mergers. So FCAC, the team here includes Jeff Sagansky. He's one of the three people that were involved on those DraftKings and Skills deals. Um, so again, it's not the complete team that did DraftKings and Skills, but it is one of the board members. Um, so I'll take a bet here on someone with experience in the SPAC game uh, with Jeff Sagansky. I think this one lands a good company uh, going forward. Uh, so that's pick number two. And then up next, we have SNPR. So this is Tortoise Acquisition 2. 
This is the same team that did Hillion, one of the top performers early on in 2020, um, with shares going over $50. Obviously, we talked yesterday about those shares, you know, retreating now that that deal has been closed. But it was at the time one of the top SPACs of the year. Um, it was one of my best trades. Um, I do still own a small position in uh, Hillion, HY or HYLN. Um, but I like the team here again to find a target in sustainability or the electric vehicle field. I think the history of that deal and the attention it got could make uh, Tortoise Acquisition 2 an attractive uh, team for a target company. Um, so again, betting on that management team. And then up next, this small one, not a lot of coverage out there. This is LFTR. Um, it's a newer one to my eyes. This is Left Terrace Acquisition, targeting fintech. So given the recent rumors of you know companies like SoFi, eToro, and other names, I think fintech is going to be a big story in 2021. Um, not that they will land you know SoFi or eToro. But I do like the management team here. You have the former CEO and director of E-Trade, and you have the former chief operating officer of Coinbase and the former chief operating officer of TD Ameritrade. So again, E-Trade, Coinbase, TD Ameritrade, targeting that same fintech space um, with experience. So that is another one I like to land a good target. And then my last pick... Um, of the five, this is one I teased on Twitter, um, so some of you may be waiting for it. This was my new purchase yesterday, trading close to $10. Um, it is BTAQ. So this is Burgundy Technology. Uh, the company did a $300 million offering. Management includes Leo Apothecar. He's the, chair, uh, the chairman and co-CEO. He is the former CEO of HP and SAP. Uh, he spent 20 plus years at SAP where he helped transform the company from a single product to a multi-solution business. SAP is a global leader in enterprise application software. The co-CEO, Jim Mackey, is, uh, worked at Citigroup, SAP, OpenText, and BlackBerry. He helped BlackBerry transform from mobile to endpoint management. So again, BlackBerry was a huge mobile company um, that kind of fell but they were able to stick around by transforming that business model. Um, they are starting to pop back up now as a, a connected car company. Um, and he was responsible for part of that move. And then Mackie, while at SAP, he did 44 acquisitions. So lots of experience there. The board of the SPAC also has ties to Track Unit, which is a telematics company, C3 AI, which was one of the best our best IPOs of 2020, uh, Workday and Saber and Sport Radar. Um, the board member Hervé Couturier worked at SAP and he also worked for IBM for 15 years in the 80s and 90s. The SPAC is targeting technology and enterprise software. In their prospectus, they said a focus on U.S., Europe, or Israel. That's the key for me here is that they said specifically Israel. Um, Apotheker graduated from the Hebrew University of Israel, and the company has ties there. So that country is now linked to several IPOs and SPAC deals going forward. I think it will be a big story in 2021. So REE Automotive is an electric vehicle play that is a rumored SPAC target, three to four billion dollars. They said that deal could be completed in January. I think that BTAQ could be the target company here to land that deal. And then also Tabula, Outbrain, eToro or all Israeli companies that are linked to SPACs or IPOs. Other large names in the country include uh, Tipalte, Tanium, Monday.com, AppsFlyer, and Moon Active. And then we've seen recent Israeli IPOs of JFrog and Lemonade. So again, big story here, Israeli tech companies. BTAQ, I think, is going to land one of those big unicorns from the country. That is one of my top picks under $11. Again, make sure you do your own research. It is a SPAC that I now own as of yesterday, trading close to $10. That's my five, Mitch. What do you, what do you got for us? 
Right. All right. So uh, yeah, definitely a great list. I was even taking some notes there. Uh, got got to go ahead and follow some of these. But as you know, I mean, at the end of the day, we're gonna keep an eye on these because there, there's gonna be one or two that I I, I feel is just gonna. We don't know which one it is, but one of them is going to get up there like a little rocket. So uh, I'm definitely going to keep a watch on these and, and we'll be taking some uh, attempts to get as close to that $10 level. You know, that's really what I like to do. You know, some people are more of these momentum buyers in the in the SPAC game and are trying to do kind of these day trades and, and maybe get, get a stock like at 13 and sell it at, at 15 in one day. Um, not necessarily my kind of strategy in these. I'm, I'm like Chris, I, I like to look at these... Uh, for their board at first and, and try to get in in a, in a good early position. Um, so I'm going to bring a couple of them that I like. Um, uh, I'll, I'll try to do my best to explain it. Maybe I'm not as good as Chris, but I, I'll do my best for you guys. But like always, guys, smash the like. We got a whole bunch of people joining us now. We got over 581 people on YouTube. So definitely hit the like below. Hit the subscribe. If you haven't heard, guys, we got a giveaway today. So scroll on up or look in the description for the link for the giveaway. And let's get to it. All right, so uh, so some of the stocks that I've been looking at, you know, as you guys know, I'm a big sports fan. So let, let's go ahead and let's get into this first one. This first one I like is SEAH. You know, the, the, the chairman and CFO, Eric uh, Grubman, you know, one of the things about him is that he's the ex. Uh, he, he has roles in the NFL. Uh, he's had roles as the EV of the business operation and he also has a, a CEO of John Collins which mostly served as the CEO of on location experiences and before that was a COO of the National Hockey League and the CEO of the Cleveland Browns NFL team so to me a, a sports spec that is in here and plans to, to get the sports entertainment sector as well as technology and services that are associated with these verticals so you're thinking stuff like you know media ticketing payment processing entertainment travel gaming loyalty programs things like that you know i, I think you know of course you know the the, the time for sports uh, kind of d did dip with the covid times and i'm going to go ahead and pull up the chart here so you guys can see the chart um and one of the things that I'm going to be looking at this one is really just the board. To me, the board is what really gets me interested in this one. Having connections with the NFL, having connections in multiple sports. I think it, it, in the long run, you know, you're going to see a good acquisition come from this. Um, I don't know what they're going to really get into. Um, I'm going to be looking at this one. Uh, I've been trying to get in this one <laughs> near near ten dollars. Uh, the other day, I was trying to get near this ten ten. But as you can see, we, we've gotten a couple spikes on this chart. So I'm kind of eager on to what's going to happen with this one. So that's S-E-A-H. Let me go ahead and put up the ticker here. A little harder to control when I'm doing everything here. But let's keep it rolling here. Let's go into another one. Um, so another one that I'm going to be looking at, guys, is, is one that I'm really interested in and one that I've done a little bit more research on, and that's SPNV. Uh, so at SPNV, uh, we're, we're talking about Supernova Partners Acquisition, the team that plans to partner with an advantage growth company that benefits uh, thermomatic shifts in tech-enabled trends. And so one of the things that you can see is that they're going to go into a big addressable market, you know, a well-defined vision with a competitive scale and, and, and a team that has success before um you know it, spnv is formed by spencer raskoff you know not, not spencer israel from pre-market prep guys but spencer raskoff you know th this was the the co-founder of zillow groups and also had connections with hotwire um you know i he, he served he served as the ceo for zillow for over 10 years and really led that company up and, and so one of the things that i'm seeing in this one is that there's a lot of connections um, and success in this company. Um, so where are they going to go ahead and get into it? To me, it's going to be something in technology. And, and I think, you know, in this era of kind of where we look to invest, uh, you're definitely looking for some tech names. So to me, SPMV is definitely going to be one that I'm going to be looking at, guys. Um, let's go ahead and try to pull up this chart here. So one of the things that you're seeing is this one has already gapped up a little bit. So let me put up the chart here. So you see this gap up from 
from kind of this eleven dollars, and, and and now it's hanging out there. You know, I, I'm gonna be keeping an eye on this one. You know, I, I think you know eventually you you get the acquisition to come out, and and this one could be one to keep going. You know, I'll definitely keep this one on watch. All right, let's go ahead and let's get into another one here. I I got my next one here. This is gonna be S uh, G S A H. So when we're talking about GSAH, we're talking about potential rumors here. Um, this is one that we talked about a little bit earlier. Um, there's two things that there's two kind of SPACs that have been rumored to been targeting uh, or potentially targeting eToro. Um, you know, eToro is engaged in talks with Goldman Sachs right now. Um, and then if you look at GSAH, that's GS Acquisition Holding Corps 2. Um, and then you could also look at the one that Chris mentioned right now, which was BTAQ. Um, so both of those ha have some kind of touching in this one. Um, where is it going to go or, or what kind of rumor is going to come out of this one? Uh, my biggest thing is just to get as close to $10. You know, I actually was in this one be before. Um, full disclosure, I I'm not in it anymore, guys. But if we pull up this chart, you know, when this one was going up here in this 13, I kind of got it down here uh, near this kind of 10, 50 area. And I was thinking it was going to come right back up. You know, like you saw this gap down and I was like, all right, well, it'll just come, come and fill this area. But that's not what happened. It actually started coming back down towards this $10 level. And I got scared out, guys. Uh, you, you know, it, it's going to happen sometimes. You, you get scared out of positions. And, and that's what happened here. But really, if I if I go back and look at it, I mean that that might have been a a really great time to add. Um, if I if I look at this chart, you know, it got down to a low of 989s, and I was kind of worried there, and I kind of got rid of it. But I'm looking to get back in because I'm starting to see some kind of bottoming action there, and getting some volumes finally starting to pick back up. And if this one can finally get a target, it, it could start making a move. All right, guys, so definitely want to give some shout outs in the chat here. If you're new to the show, say hello to the chat. I know we've been seeing a lot of people talking, a lot of people jumping in with us. Uh, we got Jeannie, Scott, Sarah, what's going on? Jackie, Snack Crackle Pop in the house, Dorothy, we got Kirby, uh, we got Kevin in the house. We got a whole bunch of new faces. This is what I like to see, guys, so definitely smash that like below, and let's keep it going. I got I got one more here for you, uh, two more, actually. I got CCIV. All right, so let's go ahead and get into CCIV. CCIV, you know, this is one that, I'm not too big on on if they get this target, but I have a feeling they might change targets. And so this one's all about the rumors of of Directv. Um, so CCIV and AT and T may be about to spin off that Directv. And if and if this one gets it, you know, we're gonna have to really worry about the evaluation of of Directv. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the chart here. Um, you're starting to push back up here. You got this opening here the 18th of september up to 1025 so i think that you know now that we're back above this 10 dollar level it's all going to be about if we can go sideways and build some volume here um you know this one got down to 965 and you don't see that often um i i know i could i could bring chris in here uh chris I, I, you don't see th this move down towards the 960s too often right no, you know, especially for one this this large, you know, that that is, you know, down below 10, super attractive there, you know, with that low risk. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, I, that's what that's what got me excited about this one. It wasn't really that I was watching this one per se, but more along, I, I saw it down here at the 970s, 980s, and then I saw the volume start coming back in it. And that got me excited a little bit. You know, at the end of the day, what, what I'm looking to do is get as close to $10 as possible so that I can manage my risk underneath 10. And in this stock, you know, it might be a little bit too much risk if you had gotten in at 10 and it went down to that 960. But majority of the times we're seeing more of a hold closer towards 980s and 975s. Um, just to kind of talk about patterns that we're seeing here. So this is one that I'm going to keep on watch to see if they change the acquisition. Because if they get DirecTV, I'm not going to be as excited. But they do have the money to get a nice acquisition here. So I'll definitely keep an eye on this one. That's CCIV. And I got one more that I got from my man, Carl, in the chat. Uh, I want to give a shout out. You know, this this you guys reach out to us. You know, that, that's one of the best parts about this is that Chris and I get messaged every day about SPACs. And, you know, 
Chris and I take them serious. You know, we go ahead and we take a look into them and try to see if, if there really is some potential here. So CTAC here. Let's go ahead and get into this one a little bit. I'm going to pull up the chart and talk a little bit about what this one could be. Uh, you know, th this is the interesting part about it. You know, the interesting part is getting kind of these information from our viewers. Um, so CTAC here. Um, is a newly organized blank check company formed by an affiliate, um, a global leader in alternative investing. Um, so one of the things that I think this one can get into, th there's, a, there's a bunch of kind of moves that it can get into, but I think this one could be kind of more of a play that can be a long-term play. And I'm going to show you why, guys. Um, so when I pull up this chart, I, I see kind of this $10 pricing, you know, back in October and November. And, and then it kind of just edged on up, edged on up. And then this big volume spike on the 19th, uh, on the 13th of November, uh, we got 10 million shares traded. And now we're back to that level. And so this is kind of like what I like to see, guys, is after that move up, you know, and some buyers got trapped up here. Can you get close to that $10 level? and manage that risk underneath it. Because if you can manage that risk underneath it, I think, you know, with an acquisition of this company, this this could easily be back up there at twelve fifties, thirteen dollars. So definitely one that I'm gonna keep on watch and one given to us by a member in our chat. And this is what it's all about, guys. It's all about you guys. So definitely hit the like, hit the subscribe below. Let's go, let's go, let's get these likes up. All right, so one of the things that we wanted to do is Chris and I have mentioned some of the ones that we like, but we do have some extra ones. And then we also want to go through some of the ones that you guys like out there. So if you guys know a SPAC that's under that $11 price point, now's your chance to get it covered. Go ahead and put it in the chat. Let's go ahead and get some ticker time going here. And let's, let's see some of those SPACs under 11 All right, guys, so I'm going to start going through some of these in the chat here. I'm seeing a lot of stocks mentioned. Uh, Chris, do you do any of these you want to go ahead and touch before we get to the chat ones? Yeah, let me let me go ahead. Uh, you know, like I said, it was hard to narrow down to five here for me. And Mitch, I love your five picks. Um, a couple of those were on my radar, too, but I didn't want to cross paths here give our viewers 10 good picks. But here's five honorable mentioned ones real quick for everyone. So I have FST uh, targeting restaurants that management team has experience with several restaurant chains. Uh, it's one I like in that space. We have IGAC, which is targeting uh, leisure and gaming. Strong management team, which includes Bradley Tusk. Um, you know, he was in an investor in Ripple and FanDuel. And then they also have the president of uh, Genting Americas, which owns two gaming properties in New York. Um, I like this one. I think they land a sports betting company or possibly a spinoff from an existing sports betting play. Uh, SV is Spring Valley Acquisition. They're targeting ESG. It's a clean energy play. I think clean energy names under 11 are going to be attractive going into the year with the new administration. And then two pending deals trading under 11. Again, we don't see that a lot as they usually trade higher going into those votes. We have RPLA, which is pending with Finance of America trading under 11. And then we have ACAM, which has a pending deal with Car Lots trading close to 11. I do own shares of ACAM. So there's five more honorable mention picks for our viewers today. And yeah, let's go ahead and get to ticker time, Mitch. All right, all right, guys. So one of the things is definitely if you're getting value from this stream, hit the like below and hit the subscribe. And if you hit that bell, you'll be notified the moment we go live. So let's go ahead and let's get into some of the stocks in the chat here. Seeing a lot of stocks mentioned. So let me just go ahead and scroll on up. If you got some, put it in there. You know, especially the new faces. This is what it, this show is all about, guys. So let's go ahead. I, I'm seeing one here mentioned uh, often AACQ. AACQ. So let's go ahead and pull this one up here. Let me get the chart out. AACQ. Let, let's see. Do you know anything about this one, Chris? You know, I don't think I know this one. Um, oh, a new one. AACQ. Um, yeah, I I will have to uh, look into this one. It's not one I am familiar with off the top of my head. Again, sometimes I get tickers confused. Uh, but yeah, that'll be one that we'll look at for a different day. But if you want to hit that chart, Mitch. 
Yeah, I got you. So one of the things is you're seeing a pull down towards that 960, kind of the same thing we saw in CCIV. Not not a pattern you see too common, but what 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 did you do see is that volume spike at ten dollars very similar. So that that's kind of one thing to pay attention to. And then you see another volume spike right now. You see these two spikes. So now what it, what we want to do is if we can hold off this prior resistance. So if it can pull back towards this 1048 today and kind of get back above there to 1060s, 1070s, I think this one's going to be looking good. So Callum, go, go on the mention. Let's go ahead and let's keep going in the chat here. All right, so let's keep going here. Let's see what else we got. Um, seeing mentions of ACAM here. ACAM. So let's go ahead and pull up this chart here. All right, all right. So do you know anything about this one, Chris? Yeah, so ACAM was one of those honorable mentions. So Car Lots is the pending deal here. Um, I like it. We've seen a lot of uh, these uh, online car companies go public in 2020, either IPOs or SPACs. Um, car Lots, I have an article out on Benzinga. They have better margins and they have lower acquisition costs compared to peers like Carvana and Shift. Um, I like this one going forward, and I think once we get a vote date, I think this one will start to move higher. So I am long ACAM here trading, you know, right around 11. Yeah, one thing that I'd mention on this chart really quickly is uh, that breakout through the resistance. We just talked about it before. When you get that pushback to resistance, you want to see that volume spike up again to show you the bulls taking control. And, and then what do you see here, guys? You see that volume spike right here? And then it, it goes sideways for a little while, above 10. And then boom, we get another volume spike. We got it right there on the 28th. And now you would just want to see if it can pull back and hold prior resistance. You know, I, I think it could possibly come back down towards 1060 or 1050s. But you, you really don't know after that kind of spike where it's going to go ahead and meet that level. Um, that's where the, the support is or the new or the old resistance. So that's what I kind of be looking at this chart, but definitely the volume spike shows you that bulls are starting to take control. All right, let's go ahead and keep going here in the chat. Definitely guys hit the like, hit the subscribe below. Let's keep it rolling here. We got Mr. 10, Mr. 10. I, I thought that was a perfect one. You know, we, we got to bring up Mr. 10 here. So M C A C here. Do you know anything about this one, Chris? Oh, MCAC, that is a uh, Playboy, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, Mountain Crest Acquisition, taking Playboy public, you know, not sure on this one. Um, you know, Playboy has kind of transformed from its former business model. Um, now it's all about licensing that, that brand, which has strong brand awareness, but it is kind of faded um, in this new generation. Uh, you know, when I wrote about it, the deal going through, I actually was surprised the company's considering getting into um, like sexual health and ED treatment options. So a little bit different uh, business model for the uh, Playboy going forward. Um, not sure of this one here. Um, yeah. Yeah, big volume spike on the 10th of December. I think that's what you got to keep an eye on here. So you got that one drive up, a pull back, a second drive up, a pull back. So I'm looking for a drive right here. And then for it to come back and maybe test this 1050. If it keeps going sideways here, that's actually a good sign. Uh, some of the things that I look for really is that sideways action above $10. And then volume to come in with the bulls and push it through. So we'll see if it kind of holds these levels for a little while. And then you see a nice big volume day to push it through this resistance of 1091. And then maybe we can get up there towards the 11. All right, let's go ahead and keep going from the chat. Seeing a bunch of stocks mentioned. Uh, th this uh, new face here, Empty Projects here with GIX. So what do you want to talk about GIX, Chris? Yeah, so GIX, so I own shares of um, GIK, which is uh, from that same family, um, taking Lightning E Motors public. So GIX, Gig Capital 2, bringing Up Health and Cloud Break Health both public. Uh, so it's a play on telemedicine. Um, you know, I don't know a ton of details of this one. Um, but it is starting to trend a little bit on Twitter and elsewhere. Um, so I'll be taking a look at this one going forward. All right, all right, guys. Let, let's go ahead and let's keep going here. Seeing some other stocks mentioned in the chat. All right, so I'm seeing uh, this one mentioned a, a couple times. Let's get into Fuse, F-U-S-E. 
Yeah, big fan of uh, Fuse here. Um, I had a couple people guess that one on Twitter um, as being uh, the one that I bought between 10 and 11, but Fuse is trading around 11.50 now. Big fan of the management team here. It's also linked to um, those BlackFi rumors. Um, you know, I, I like this one. I like the management team. Um, I, it's going to continue to trade at a, at a premium, um, but I, I like it here. All right, guys, seen a couple of people mention a, a couple of this. So let's get into this one. Uh, I'm not even sure it is down at that price, but let's, let's check it out. Ajax, is Ajax down there? No, so Ajax, I don't think uh, is down there. So someone probably just wants to know. So yeah, $12. Uh, um, they snuck it on there. They snuck it. Yeah, big fan of this one. Um, if you want to <laughs> know my if you want to know my thoughts on Ajax, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you, you probably want to tune in tomorrow when I talk about my uh, favorite SPACs for 2021, because I think it might be on that. Yeah, guys, so stay tuned. Definitely tomorrow, we're going to be giving out the what we think are going to be the best SPACs of 2021. And really, this is kind of more of the bigger ones that we want to kind of see if we can tell a story and then you guys go ahead and, and do your research. And, and if you guys agree to it, you know, you can make your own investment decisions. All right. So let's go ahead and keep going through here. Let, let's see some other tickets here. Uh, yeah, I don't think that one's down at that price. But um, uh, I've seen a couple of stocks mentioned. We're trying to get the ones that are under 11, guys, under 11. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's keep it going here. I'm seeing XPOA, XPOA by Lee. XPOA I know came up on my list um, when I was looking. Yeah, so uh, targeting technology, uh, the former chief business officer of Uber, and then also Eric Schmidt, who was the Google CEO and chairman um, for years. Uh, so strong management team there. Um, you know, they raised over $300 million, so decent size SPAC. Um, I don't know a ton here, but this is one, you know, yeah, that I'll be looking uh, more into going forward with that management team. All right, all right. Got, uh, I got a, a real loyal listener here, loyal fan. Uh, goes ahead and, and, and let's give him some shout out here. So we got Sheriff here mentioning WPF, WPF. So what's going on with WPF, Chris? Yeah, so WPF is another um, Bill Foley uh, SPAC. So remember Bill Foley, that other one talking or taking um, PaySafe public. So Bill Foley, uh, former chairman of Fidelity National, he also owns the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, he's got lots of experience with deals. So this SPAC uh, was one of the larger deals done targeting fintech. So yes, it has been linked to rumors. Um, with a light, um, I don't know a ton there. Um, but with those rumors coming from Reuters, I think it's pretty, uh, you know, a good rumor there. So typically when those, uh, rumors pop up, uh, we get a confirmed deal around a month later. So keep an eye on this one in January and we'll see if that deal, um, gets announced officially. All right, guys, we got another one here mentioned, uh, we got P I P P. Uh, by my man Carl, the the one that brought us to CTAC. So let, let's go ahead and give him a shout out here. P I P P. And also mentioned here by Blitzman. So he just mentioned the warrants one. So let's let's take a look here. All right, let me go ahead and pull this chart up here. Let's see see what I see. I see it's still trading on, as you. So I don't think it's trading on common shares yet. But let me go ahead and take a look. This is Pine Island Acquisition Corps. Um, so if we could see that drive up. You know, we got some good volume on that first day, 6 million shares traded um, and no volume since essentially. Uh, you see these bars, they're, they're really tiny. So to me, uh, I'd be looking for a volume bar because I, I don't want to get into a stock that just doesn't have any kind of bull uh, push, but uh, I'm definitely going to watch the volume to see when we get a spike uh, or maybe we get a pullback towards support, towards maybe like this uh, 10 uh, 30 area and then you see the big volume bar come back up towards that $11 that's kind of what I'll be keeping an eye out for guys all right so let, let's see what else we got, we got out here we got a bunch of stocks being mentioned CCIV was one of the ones we mentioned G style so definitely scroll back on the show and you'll be able to uh, hear what we talked about that one um, seeing a, a couple of this one mentioned uh, so seeing BT 
BT by Roger. Roger, we see you in the chat. Definitely hit the like down below, guys. Let's keep it going here. BTBT. What do you know about that one, Chris? Uh, BTBT, uh, I believe, is not a SPAC. It is a uh, Bitcoin play. Oh, they um, got me. They got me again. Yeah. Man. You know, I've been watching this one for a little bit. Um, huge move today. Uh, it's another one of those plays kind of like Riot um, and Hive where they have Bitcoin mining. Um, you know, the thing I saw with BTBT that I actually did like was they're trading at a lower valuation than Riot blockchain, even though they have a higher hash rate which as we look at those Bitcoin um, stocks going forward, you know, that hash rate is going to be real important and who has, you know, the most miner, the most miners, the best mining equipment. So BTBT, be careful, guys. It is a runner today. Um, but outside of SPACs, you know, that is one that has been on my radar, kind of looking for some uh, Bitcoin, um, you know, exposure with some of those names as well. Yeah, it looks like your cat's trying to uh, agree with us, so always, I, I always, can't blame him. Always trying to get the spotlight here, yeah. The the, the cat spec. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got Nate Richard here talking about EXPC, guys. Uh, how you doing, Nate? Uh, love to see the new faces. This is what it shows all are really all about. So let's go ahead and pull up this chart. Um, seeing this one start push today, you know, it actually made the, uh, a move. So let, let's go ahead and pull up this chart here. So, you know, one of the things you got is that volume spike on the 15th. What we, what we first need to see, right, guys? So volume spike and then a move towards support because at the end of the day, I don't want to be buying into this rip candle and then get stuck up here. And then the next day it's down here and I'm just like, just, 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 just kicking myself. Just like, what, what am I gonna do? So always, guys, know the levels, know the levels. Because if you would have been watching, you know, you could have gone off of this resistance, or maybe even right here where it got even to the to that support right here, that 1021 area. So that could have been a good target area, and then you get in this drive back up. And what ends up happening is two days of low volume, followed by a little bit of green, that got it up to this 11. Then it pulled back a little bit. See that lower volume again. And then what ends up happening? Boom, you start getting some increase of volume and that's what's starting to drive it. You know, and, and some buyers are stepping up in this one. So definitely want to see this one if it can close today above 1150, which was this prior high. That will give it some strength because if it can close above that, then maybe it, tomorrow it, it gaps up to 12 it can really start giving that pressure up and, and there won't be that so much downside pressure of maybe people that got caught here in the 1150s. Yep. And EXPC is one with a pending deal um, for Blade. That's that air mobility, the helicopter um, kind of of the future company. And I am seeing that EXPC is also starting to get a lot of attention on Twitter from some of those different um, trading groups. Um, so be careful with this one trading higher now. Um, it looks like it's going to get a lot of attention here. All right, guys. All right. So seeing a couple of uh, stocks mentioned here, let's get into uh, a couple more. Um, I, I want to mention, you know, right here, uh, one of our favorite one of our favorite listeners here, a young investor mentioning a, a stock that I don't think it's down there, but I sure wish it was. Uh, DMYD here mentioned. Uh, th this is one that I, I'm, if it comes back to 10 or 11, you, you let me know, young investor, because I'll be ex I'll be super excited about this one. So definitely uh, you're seeing this one up there at 1750s now. Uh, this one's the one that partnered with Genius Sports. And if you guys haven't seen the interview that we had, with uh, Niccolo Damasi, definitely check it out, guys. Uh, I, what do you want to say about this one, Chris? Yeah, DMYD, another favorite here. Um, maybe it gets a mention on tomorrow's show for 2021. Uh, you know, that deal with Genius Sports, it is trading over 16 now. I do love the story here. They really have kind of a, du a duopoly with Sport Radar for um, sports data to those sports betting providers. I loved our interview. And the one I'll be looking at is DMYI which is still trading as units, but that's that third SPAC from DMY technology. Um, once those units split, you know, and we have common shares, I think it trades at a premium, but um, I'll be looking at getting into uh, units on this one. Um, I love the experience from this group and look at DMYT and DMYD, you know, both pretty successful in that sports world. So yeah, a uh, big fan of DMYD, young investor. All right, guys, got my last one here. I'm going to go ahead and touch into, and this is a VGAC. I saw it mentioned by a couple people in the chat. So definitely want to go ahead and touch that one. What's going on with VGAC, man? 
Yeah, VGIC, Virgin Group, um, again, trades at a little bit of a premium. But, I, you know, for, for an experienced team trading, you know, between 11 and 12 isn't that uncommon right now. And I like this one. Richard Branson, the whole Virgin Group team, I think they land a big name. Um, this is one we've been talking about since day one on the show, I believe, Mitch. It was on that first watch list we ever created. Um, so we might have to go back and look and see what it was trading at the time because I think it was around 10. Um, but big fan of VGAC, uh, you know, going forward. Yeah, you know, one of the things that th that one came out exactly timed with my other one that I've been looking at, which is SEAH. And so one of the patterns that I noticed, and I don't know if you noticed this pattern, Chris, is that uh, a lot of them kind of were going similar with the time that they've been released. Um, I, I started trying to pay attention to this to see if there's maybe a pattern of like they're all moving at one time. Like let's say all the ones that moved that came out in October all moving up at the same time. And, and that's kind of the, the patterns that I look for, guys. I'm, I'm a patterns guy. So if you guys ever see a pattern, mention it in the comments, and I'll definitely take a look at it. You know, that's what it's all about, guys. So let's go ahead and let's give some shout-outs here, definitely to the chat. Um, we've been seeing some great action here. Joining us, over 700, and I think I think we hit over 750 on YouTube. So definitely, guys, hit the like. This is what the show's all about. We got some great giveaways, guys. You know, we're, we're, we're working to give away some of these back gear so definitely guys hit the link in the description if you want to go ahead and enter it'll go ahead and let you know uh, like always guys be a subscribe to to be a part of this and and if you guys check it out you know there, there's a lot of ways to enter you know you can get a lot of entries and different ways so check it out guys we'll put up the link one more time here in the chat and then we'll, we'll go ahead and get on out of here anything else you want to leave us with chris uh no that's it um you know Big show today. Thanks for everyone for tuning in. Great audience today. Great job in the chat, you know, throwing out some of those names. Looking forward to tomorrow's show, um, you know, New Year's Eve. What better way to, you know, go into the new year than to share our top picks for 2021. Again, it's just our opinions. Make sure you do your own research, but we'll, I'll be looking for um, some picks for, you know, SPACs that haven't announced deals, SPACs that have announced deals, and some former SPACs that I like going forward. And then going into the new year, I do have several companies lined up that are looking to bring their CEOs on the show. One of them was mentioned in headlines today. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, but looking forward to that one as there is a lot of attention on that name as well. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss those great interviews that we have for everyone. Yeah, guys, getting a bunch of love in the chat. Definitely, guys, let everyone know where the best SPAC attack show is in the world. It's right here on Benzinga, guys. So definitely let everyone know. Hit the subscribe. Get to that. Hey, if you guys want... I want that SPAC hoodie. I don't know about you guys. I, I'm ordering one myself, you know, because I'm a SPAC man myself. So I That's can't right. blame you guys if you guys are the same. So can't definitely, wait guys, to wear, to wear that merch on the show one of these days. So oh, oh you know it's on that. the, you know it's on the way, Chris. You already know, guys. So we'll see you guys next time on the SPACs attack. Let you guys know the entries will be going through until tomorrow, 11:30 Eastern time. That's when we're going to go ahead and select the winners. Um, it's not only the merch guys we also got monthly benzinga pro packages to give out i think this is really where the value is so definitely guys hit that entries hit those links in the description and we'll see you tomorrow on the spacs attack Bye, baby let's do it All right.